What do you most hope readers will take away from your book? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we teach relationship classes, but we also teach classes on happiness and well-being. And I want people to be inspired when they read the book that they can take their happiness quotient up and their feeling of well-being up, which has immediate return when you put some time and attention to your relationship and particularly the beliefs that drive your behaviors. So the people in the positive psychology movement talk about 80% of your happiness and well-being. 50% comes from your genetics, then you've got 10% from your life circumstances, but 40% is your beliefs that drive your behaviors. That's a large portion. And I think the people who are writing about relationship are doing a terrific job about conflict management skills and communication skills. And the positive psychology people are doing a fabulous job talking about developing our signature strengths. But I feel that there's a lack in the fields of talking about the beliefs that drive our behaviors. And so we're trying to make our contribution to prompt people to take some time to look at their beliefs that drive their behaviors that may be enhancing their relationship or not. They may be dragging their relationships down like people don't change and the expectation of happily ever after. Or relationships are too hard, they're more trouble than they're worth. Do you know? Because if they spend some time examining their beliefs and see what the kernel of truth might be and then how they've used that to not be as powerful and influential and causal as they could be, I'm certain, and I see this all the time with the people that I work with, students and clients, and we've seen it in our relationship really work for us, they move up into the higher zones of well-being very immediately. It's directly causal, beneficial effect. Yeah, well, I love the question. Um, what is it, the kind of the essence of what uh, we would like people to take with them from this book? Um, what what um uh, what it brings to mind is that um, I have two favorite bumper stickers, and I don't know about you, but I, I have found a lot of uh, enlightenment from certain bumper stickers. Usually, not the ones that endorse politicians, but the ones that have got kernels of wisdom in them. So here's what they are, um, because this is really what I would love for people to take with them. It just boils down to these two things. One. My favorite bumper sticker is don't believe everything you think. <laughs> um, and I'm a, I think that's a great bumper sticker and I believe that. <laughs> uh, and the other one is uh, the very simple suggestion to question authority. And I don't necessarily mean the external authorities out there like your boss or your mother or your, you know, the president of the United States, or uh, although certainly question, question them too, but there's another authority that I think we, we have internalized, so many of us, and that is the uh, authority of the culture that uh, promotes certain ideas that have a lot of agreement, and, and when there's enough agreement about certain things, we can't help but mm -hmm. take that more seriously than we do if there's not uh, a lot of agreement. And, and so what happens is that we take those external authorities and then we internalize them. And then when we have an inner authority that tells us, no, this is the way it should be, this is the truth, this is the way you've got to be now, just to do nothing more than just question that with a response to ourselves as simple as, hmm, is that really true though? That's all. Asking that question when we notice, and this is the important part, when we become aware that we are in the grips mm -hmm. of a generalization or a belief or a myth <clears throat> that may not be true, asking that question is the first and most important step in getting free from it. That is such a powerful question. Is that really true? That opens up uh, the possibility of seeing it 
in some other way. When we're in the grips of a myth, we can't see it any other way because it is reality. It is the truth, but not necessarily. So if people can leave, uh, can, can um, take away from reading this book with s simply an awareness of when they're relating through the filter of a myth and when they're really experiencing something that's actually true, um, th that would that would be great. I would I would love for that to happen. Mm -hmm.